Hey everybody, my name is Don, and today I'm going over how to implement timers and delays. Well, t delays in the sense of timers in C++ and how to start them, to stop them, and what some of the use cases are. So before I get into the actual implementation, I can actually go over how to use timers. In C++, we don't have access to delays. Delays are a blueprint concept. So if we want to delay an action, we need to set up a timer with that time set, just the timer not ticking. And that, that is really easily done, and I'm going over that in a second. And another use case for timers is also to repeat an action on, let's, let's just say tick for, for now, but but I'm going a bit more in depth in a second. So for example, if you want something to happen over time and you maybe even wanna be able to, for example, slow it up, slow it down. For example, if you have a replicated, a network replicated game and depending on the distance, you want a player to less often update to maybe save some performance for the client. So what you can do is you can get the distance to the client and depending on how far it is away at like increments, you can say now that timer only updates at 0.8 or the, uh, at like one second, every one second. It's just a way to manage um, load a bit better over time. Generally, it's a good idea to actually move away from tech and try to manage every most of the things with timers if you're not bound to tech. Because what you have the access to is pretty much a completely free range of starting a timer, clearing a timer, and pausing and unpausing it. And not actually only being limited to one timer. So you could have multiple timers running at the same time, doing different things, like one counting score, one uh, dealing as a actual round timer, which counts out counts up the seconds, uh, how long the match is going on, and so on and so on. So with all that out of the way, let's just get started. What I have here is I pretty much just set up a simple input logic to just take my A key and B key. I can really quickly show this if I just drag this into here and oops. Log A and log B. There you can see uh, if I press A, I'm logging A. If I press B, I'm logging B. So let's actually get set up with timers. So what we first want to do is we want just a simple timer to act like a delay. So how would we do that without like actually saving the timer and later wanting to man manipulate it? So if we actually are right here in our class, uh, what we want to do is first of all create a void void timer. So in my case it's void um, delay input a. Yeah, you can call it whatever you want. It's just for a bit of clarity's sake. So with this delay input a, I want to pretty much delay my input a for a little bit. So I'm gonna create an implementation. You can also create a definition. It pretty much is the same thing. Just implementation is a bit better if you work a lot with net networking and have Visual Assistant installed for this case. So let me just move that logged A into our input delay. And in here, what I wanna do is first of all, uh, I need to get the header. So the header we wanna use is you know, include, I mean, and I'm actually gonna include this on my header because I'm gonna work with the time manager in a second as a global variable. So I'm gonna ooh, uh, include uh, time manager dot h. Can I do that? Time timer manager. But it's actually properly capitalized this. Okay. So now we have access to our timer manager. So in our input a what we can do is we can get our world and then we want to get our time manager and I should also include world so we don't get that error anymore. 
Then we get our time manager and from there we can set our timer. So what the timer actually takes in as parameters is first is a timer handle. Second is what object we want to um, start a timer on. The third one is the actual reference to the function. Um, the fourth one is our delay and the last one is if we want that to tick, well, to repeat the action. So in my case, I'm gonna just make a F time, nope, F timer handle. And I'm gonna call this um, input a delay, delay manager. Oh, that's, that's a bad name, but actually let me prefix this properly. Timer handle underscore input. A delay manager. Okay. So in here, I'm going to use my delay manager and I'm going to use this because I want this to act upon this class here. And then I'm going to do I add a, a test character and then we want to call our delay input a and let's let me put this to like zero point and it's like, so put it to one second and not make this tick. So do 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 yeah. no wait one point zero f because we want to make this flop. Okay. So let me just really quickly compile this and show you what it does. There we go. And now if we clear our log and just cl click play and clear it again because I forgot that, yeah. Okay, and if I press A, after a second, we log A. So this is the basic way of implementing a delay. So next up, I wanna go over how to actually make a ticking function, which we can disable over time. So I'm gonna take my timer handle here and move it actually into a protected, as a protected variable. Uh, you can make it public if you want to access this from other class or from your blueprint if you have a exposed blueprint, but then you need to add your U property tags so you can read it in blueprint. But we have our time manager, uh, input delay manager here, actually call. Time and input A. Let's let's just call it something more simple. So we now have our input A and we want it to, for example, take in our case. So on our input B, I want to actually stop that or pause that. So we want to actually I want to stop it. So I'm, I want to get um, first of all, I want to check if our input um, handle uh, and our time handler is valid Oop. and is valid there you go so and if it's valid i want to get world get time manager and then clear timer dh input a so this way we will just stop it. so if i now compile and click play oops and then click our a to start our timer well that's on a very very slow rate but you can see it takes every one second in our case and if i press b i can clear the timer and it doesn't take anymore and if I want to start it again, I can just press A. And yeah. So for example, if we want to say, if let's say our input B is a action um, that actually you want to slow things down if the player is further away. Well, what you can pretty much do is you can pretty much clear the timer and for example, start it at a quicker rate. So in my case, let's, let me just put it at 0.1F. So with input A, we set it at a specific rate. And if input B happens, so let's say the player gets over a specific distance away, we want 
B to happen. So in our case, input A, B acts as um, speeding up the timer. So yeah, so if I click A, it logs very slow. And if I press input B, I should also compile it. <laughs> wow, okay. So let me just really quickly wait while it compiles. So if I press A, you can see we have a slow logging. And if I press B, you see it's going a lot quicker. So this should just give you a idea of what you can do with timers with very simple timer logic. So we can also pause timers. This is useful if you, for example, want to just pause something which you later want to unpause. So for example, if team A gets into a capture point and they start capturing, you want to start a timer and you want to, you can keep that timer up or you can clear it after the player left. But if you keep it up, you can pretty much pause it. And then when they, when more players from team A, for example, are again in the circle, you can unpause it. So let us set up a really quick example to demonstrate this. So 0.1f. And what I want to check here is I want to get a if statement and I want to get our time handler input A. Um, oh wait, uh, I need to put that above because I don't want it uh, to run the first time I'm actually calling this. Then I'm gonna check is valid again to make sure our time handler is valid so we don't try to do something with an invalid object. And let me just ca copy this one here. Uh, wait, uh, I want another if statement because I wanna check if it's paused. Um, timer, uh, Pause. Is time of paused? And then our timer handle. So if it's paused, we wanna get our world, get time manager. Oops. Get time timer manager. And then we wanna uh, pause and unpause timer and our th timer. And if we want to, pr uh, if we press input B, we want to pretty much, do, do, do. and if it's not valid, we want to pretty much set it. So, and we want to get our time manager and also we should also do the same check we did up here, just in reverse. So I'm just going to put a exclamation mark, which reverses well, it, it, it accounts as a not gate, well, a not. So if this would be true, if it's not paused, so if it's paused, it's true, we want to start it. If it's not paused, we want to pause it. So let me clear this out here and then do another dot pause timer. And our input, there we go. So what should now happen is if our time handler is valid, uh, we check if it's paused. If it's paused, we want to unpause it. And if it's not set, we want to set it. And down here, if our input is valid and it is not paused, we want to pause it. So let me really quickly compile and just show what that does. So if I click now play and press A, we can see we are logging and I press B and clear the timer. You see it stopped logging, but if I press A again, it starts logging again. So this is a good way to start and stop a specific function for, for example, capture logic, or even if you have a, for example, a timer in game, which you want to tick, but if you press escape, you want the timer to stop. But with this said, it's pretty much everything I have to teach about timers, and I hope somebody found this useful. Uh, I hope you also enjoy the new type of tutorials I'm doing, because I'm currently working on a bit of a few bigger projects in the background, and I just want to fill a bit of 
space in between with actual useful learning content. But with that said, I hope you all had, I hope you all learned something from this. And with that said, wish you all a great day and goodbye.